In terms of the clinical trials, we're certainly going to be guided by what we think are unique results in Alzheimer's disease. You may not know, but in Alzheimer's disease, there have been no drugs approved to actually treat the underlying disease and halt the progression and actually show improvement or reversal of disease. In our latest phase two trial, we actually have done that. Uh, we, we need to reinforce that with a higher uh, power, which we, we're planning in a confirmatory trial this beginning this year, where we actually see for the first time, we believe in the industry, a reversal of progress, actually improvement of severe Alzheimer patients, uh, a space where the, the industry has really reluctantly moved away from because they don't have any hope that their approach, whether it's immunology or whether it's neuropharmacology, they can actually approach. So we have that as a unique space. Given our results, that we actually see an improvement that is actually sustained and shows benefit even after the drugs stop being administered, we're gonna use that as a guide for Fragile X trial. We're gonna actually use a protocol that's very similar to that. It will be with children, probably somewhere between five, uh, 10 and 30 years old, they're, even though they're uh, young adults that will be considered children, but 10 to 30. And we'll use a very similar um, uh, protocol that, as we use in Alzheimer's disease. And we're very fortunate in that uh, even in the animal models, we always paralleled what we did in uh, Alzheimer's with what we did in Fragile X. And that's what we hope to do with our clinical trial study, hopefully to begin this year for, for Fragile X, in parallel to what we're doing with Alzheimer's disease. In the oncology literature, which has been very, very helpful to us, there were 63 trials with 1,500 patients uh, for oncology, for bryostatin, done over 15 years or so. And that gave us a profile of the basically toxicity, higher doses being used for inhibition of the, 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 ta the target PKC epsilon, lower doses being for activation. And we're looking for activation both in Alzheimer's and Fragile X. But uh, we're fortunate in that we have that as a kind of guide to where we can look for toxicity. And there have been a couple of pediatric studies who, that did involve oncology and did show safety. Um, so we have something of a uh, uh, a guide for how we progress there. We'll have to see how much more talks we would have to do. Um, I'm not sure that we have to do a great deal more, but we would then try to do a, an early uh, pharmacokinetic and target engagement study and possibly an early proof of efficacy, maybe with an open label, meaning not doing placebo control at first, to try to monitor how we might benefit fragile X patients. There have been a lot of preclinical studies by, by many laboratories, none of which show a really clear cognitive benefit or regeneration of the networks. We think that we are unique in the fragile X space to do that. But also, the fragile X clinical studies have tried to use other metrics than just cognitive. Our focus is on cognition. So we're going to have with the fragile X uh, uh, several different metrics that essentially monitor the, the uh, children's benefit cognitively um, in response to the, the uh, bryostatin treatment.